Roar! <laughs> the Skylar Pseudonym by I. I. Saw Chapter 19 Unexpected Complications When I got back to Nebula, I had a little meeting with the rebel Pegasi and tried to straighten them out. So, you don't want us to kill your enemies, mistress? Loose Leaf frowned, trying hard to grasp the alien concept. She stood at the center of a score of Pegasi, all fervently devoted to the Terminator of Delights. All were nearly swooning in, yes, delight at being in my presence. Only if it's necessary, in battle, or to defend one of the crew, or an innocent bystander. But try to discourage your opponents rather than killing them. Show mercy, understand? It was obvious they didn't. A pegasus near the back of the crowd raised her hoof. But what if they don't... Look, just keep mercy in mind when you have to fight, okay? A murmur of what might have been agreement or confusion swept through the crowd. I took a break from trying to inculcate a radically different culture into my fanatical feathered followers to say goodbye to the prize crew. Filigree was captaining Deathstrike and stalwart Lance was taking command of Bloody Hearth. One. They had charts of congruent areas between the Empire and Equestria that I had drawn up with fairly generous margins of error clearly indicated, too. They also had 4,500 medallions each, which left Nebula with nearly a thousand to distribute across a new western territory on our way back to the gate in the Badlands. 1. Honestly, if I had been told that somewhere in the Empire was an airship named Grim and mighty blood-soaked warrior who gets all the cute mares, I wouldn't have doubted it for a second. 2. The spell would take care of elevation and material separation, but I didn't want any pony appearing in the middle of places like the Everfree or the Celestial Sea. Be careful, you two, I told them. If you get into a tight spot, use your parachutes. They nodded and Lance said, It was a pleasure serving under you, princess. If you ever have a need for a big lummox like me as crew again, just let me know. Well... I said thoughtfully. We will be attempting a trade agreement with the Empire once they've become desperate enough to negotiate with an egalitarian government. 3. I'm sure there will be a need for ponies with practical knowledge of their situation. Would you consider a position on an interdimensional merchant airship? It probably wouldn't be aboard Nebula, but I own several other nimble little traders. 3. And once I'd figured out how to overcome the interdimensional barrier from the outside. Brute force was fine for pushing out of a dome-equivalent structure but not so good at getting in. He considered that for a moment and then said, I think I would enjoy that. Good! I grinned. We will sell the details when we see each other back in Equestria. I turned to Filigree. How about you? Any plans for when you get back? Daisy and I are going to take a tour of Equestria together and pick out a spot to settle down. He said, smiling broadly. Then we are going to open a workshop to develop new Arcano Tech devices that will make good use of all the cheap Aracalcums that will be available soon. Ah, uh, well, I have several old tomes on Aracalcic working dynamics that would make the perfect wedding present. I paused and then let my expression darken. I am invited, aren't I? Filigree made a non-commitment movement of his head. If you promise to change before you show up. But if I scare away all the other guests, you'll save a whole lot on the reception. I said in a perfectly serious voice. Think about it. We couldn't keep it up. We both started snickering at the same time, Lance joining in with his big booming laugh.
All right, then, I said as my laughter trailed off. Midnight is nearly upon us. Go well and stay safe. The Pegasi made one last sweep of the sky before we pulled aside the camouflage netting. After they gave us the all clear, we lifted all together, Lance's ship heading north, Filigrae's southeast, and Nebula turning her nose to the southwest. Our plan was to sail across the border at high altitude again and then run full out for the rough passage through the Dientes Blanco mountains south of Palo Verde. Once we had ascertained what had happened to the western fleet, we could adjust our plans accordingly, distribute our medallions and head home, leaving the Empire of Earth to flounder and collapse as its power supply vanished. Simple. I had all of two hours to enjoy the feeling of a well-crafted plan going exactly as expected before the western sky lit up with a series of colorful flares. One of Loose Leaf's Pegasi, Sharpwing, was on watch, and I asked him if he knew what the signals meant. The answer I got was an unpleasant surprise. That sequence means assemble downwind in line, he said frowning. A fleet maneuver? I asked. Appalled. A squadron, at least, ma'am, he replied. They might be setting up a blockade. If so, we can expect a screen of Pegasi even at night. Where had those ships come from? Was it the Western Fleet returning, nowhere near as damaged as we had hoped? It wasn't as much of a mystery that they'd strung their line to cut off our retreat to the West. Just a bit of sensible analysis of our movement would have given them a good idea of where we were headed next. Hopefully they would have assumed that our two prizes would be accompanying us and not guessed that they were headed deeper into the Empire. I tapped the tip of a forehoof against the quarterdeck lightly, sinking hard. We can go over them, but the chances of being spotted are too great. I said to myself in a low voice. I want to keep that little trick a secret for as long as I can. I beg your pardon, ma'am, Sharpwing said. Just thinking out loud, I said, hardly louder. Pardon me, ma'am, he said tentatively. May I ask a question? Sure, I said absently, still trying to think up a way to get more information about what awaited us out there in the dark. I don't know if Leaf had a chance to tell you, but as us loyal to you have taken the Black Gate, could you not return to your home for reinforcements? Wait, I said, my half-formed scheme dissipating like a sneeze in a gale. What? He let his ears drop, afraid he had offended me somehow. A, a band of lairless defeated the guardians of the gate. The great gems are back in place, and it is ready for you to use as you please, oh great one. Just ma'am, please, I said almost automatically. He nodded desperately. Yes, ma'am. You mean the gate to my home universe? I asked, fervently hoping he would say no. Yes, ma'am. That meant it was the gate to her universe. And it's active. Unlocked? I had given up hoping by then. Yes, ma'am. Rotabots! I turned and blew hard three times into the speaking tube to the copula, and then repeated the signal into the one to the captain's cabin. Then I reversed our course, swinging Nebula a full 180 degrees so sharply that her hull swung back and forth a half dozen times before settling down. Ow! Go rouse loose leaf out of her hammock and get her up here! I said as soon as the current floated down beside the main mast. She turned and went down to the aft companionway without a word. Skylar was on deck a moment later, looking sleep tousled but alert. What is it, Miss Nightshade? We've got a problem, a big problem! I gritted my teeth and shook my head. No, two big problems, or one big problem and one huge problem! Skyla stepped closer to me and said softly into one ear, Breeze, Twilight. Screaming in frustration would technically count as breezing, right? And it had been going so well, too. 
I made do with a low growl as I exhaled. Owl returned with Loose Leaf in tow. Change of plans, Loose Leaf, I said. Can you get us to the Black Gate from here? Certainly, my liege, she replied immediately. No, she hadn't sworn fealty to me, and I had told her a dozen times to call me Miss Nightshade or Ma'am when aboard, but I didn't have any time to spare to correct her. Again. Good. I nodded. Ow, take the helm and follow the course that Leaf gives you. I need to speak to the captain alone. Ow lifted an eyebrow about a hair's breadth, and I replied with a subtle twitch of the corner of my mouth that essentially meant, A manticore has relieved himself above one of our propellers. Be ready for anything. She sighed quietly and gave a nod so slight it was nearly microscopic. Skyla and I flew up above Nebula and followed along in her wake out of earshot as we talked. After I had filled her in on the blockade and what Sharpwing had told me, she asked, And you think this other Twilight Mat comes through the gate? Wouldn't that be a good thing? She could help us, couldn't she? It's possible, but I don't like the arts, I replied. Even taking into consideration differential time flows, she probably is a lot older than I am and certainly a lot more powerful. I'm pretty sure she didn't defeat the old Pegasus Kingdom by subterfuge. Also, they remember her as... Well, as I look right now, not exactly a good sign. But she's essentially you, right? She wouldn't be a danger to us, Skylar protested. If she had ever seen the darker side of her beloved Auntie Luna, she wouldn't have held that opinion. Maybe not, but even if she shows up and isn't hostile, the rebel Pegasi are going to be very confused by two thieves of honor. The only thing keeping them on our side is superstitious belief, and if they decide they're mistaken... Skyla nodded. Right. So, we get there as soon as possible and depower the gate. What about the brocade? We need more information, I said. I'll ask Loose Leaf if some other of her groups can find out exactly what's going on. I'm hoping to be out of sight by dawn, but if it looks like the Empire is going to overwhelm us, we can always use the medallions to escape. She nodded thoughtfully and then her eyes widened. But that would mean leaving the ship behind. We can't do that. I shrugged. Maybe I can retool the Black Gate to get her home again, but if not, we might have to abandon her, yes. Oh, Twilight, she said, suddenly dropping her captain persona. We can't. I don't want to be responsible for losing Nebula. It's all right. I said as my heart twisted in my chest and the wind blew a few stray tears from my eyes. I've got other airships, newer ones, I could even build another. I stopped lying to her because my throat had tightened up too much to talk. No, she insisted. We're not going to lose her. Come on! With two powerful flaps of her wings, she streaked forward diving for Nebula's quarterdeck. Her sudden departure caught me by surprise, and it took me another moment to compose myself before following. By the time I touched down, she was already giving orders. Loose Leaf, pick two of your crew with the best chance of infiltrating the Imperial fleet. Get us detailed information on what is going on and what they know about us. No, don't look to Miss Nightshade. I'm the captain here, and if you think she's crazy, it's only because you don't know me. Get moving! I want that information yesterday! Loose Leaf fled below decks like her wings were on fire. Skylar turned to the fossil deck and yelled to the unicorn on bow watch. Linwood, get full charging teams to the engines right now! We're running flat out until we get to the gate! Move your tail! I opened my mouth to make a suggestion, but Skylar was at full ahead and in no mood to heave to. Ow, get whatever zebra fire we have left ready to use at a moment's notice. Have medallions and gems ready at all stations on board. Remind the crew that they need a unicorn present to use them, but also make it clear that any pony that uses one without being in deadly peril will be in deadly peril when I catch up with them. Understood? She turned to Sharpwing without waiting for an answer.
Sharpwing, get the rest of your group into the air and scout ahead! I do not want to run into any more surprises tonight! Sharpwing snapped a salute and went to carry out his orders. Skylar turned back to me. I hope it doesn't come to it, but what I need you to do is figure out a way to defeat yourself. If there's anything I haven't thought of, tell me now. I was so proud of my niece that I thought for a moment I was going to cry again. Aye, aye, Captain! I give her a full wing salute. I'm on it! After an hour or so, I gave up on designing a set of guns that would duplicate T-Rex's magic stealing spell. It would take three of them fired at exactly the same time and precisely on target to mesh the release, guidance and absorption stages of the spell. It was certainly possible to build a mechanism that would automate the process, but even with Filigree's help it would have taken weeks or possibly months to create such a complex device. A magic ceiling spell, like the one that had been used on me at Redkeep, was far more practical and easier to build device, so that's what I concentrated on for the rest of the night. At dawn, Skylar was on the quarterdeck with Sirocco at the wheel. Star was looking through a big telescope mounted on the aft rail. More ponies were at each side of the waist and near the bow, all scanning the sky with spy glasses and there was a group of three unicorns at each engine pod, feeding them power. Good morning, Miss Nightshade, Skylar greeted me. What progress? I've got the diagrams drawn out for a magic nullification mandala. I should be able to produce one by tomorrow afternoon at the least. I glanced down at the rumbling engine pods. Still running over their rating? She nodded. We throttled back a bit, but Swiftwing still has him at 110%. He's keeping a close eye on them and they seem to be holding up well. I can take over for a while if you want to get some sleep. I offered. Skylar shook her head. You need it more than I do. You'll need a steady horn to engrave that mandala. Why don't you grab some food and then turn in for a couple of hours? I hesitated and she said... Do I need to make that an order, Miss Nightshade? I grinned at her. No, Captain, but wake me if there's any news, please. Of course, it was hard to get sleep, even as tired as I was, and when I did manage it, my dreams were troubled. Majesty? I was instantly awake at our soft word, and I sat bolt upright in my bunk my horn reflexively coming to light. There is no danger, Ao said a bit more loudly from where she curled near the door to my cabin. But the Pegasus spies have returned, and I was the captain now. This one assumed you would wish to hear their report. Thank you, Ao, I said, throwing aside my blanket and rolling out of the bunk. She followed me up the ladder to Skylar's cabin. In my eagerness, I almost barged in without knocking, but caught myself at the last moment. I wrapped my hoof against the door. It's Al and me, Captain, I called out. Come in, Miss Nightshade. There was some urgency in her voice. And there was a good reason for that. Nebula had been spotted. So, the Western Fleet is back unharmed? I asked, frowning. Skylar gave a bitter laugh at that. Oh no, according to these two, she indicated the pegasi that Leaf had sent to spy on the blockade with a flick of her wing. Your plan worked all too well. There are only three ships in the Western fleet that aren't lost or crippled by engine and gun explosions, and that's after they cannibalized the wrecks to make repairs. Since they can't trust any of their gems, they're still moored at Palo Verde, just swinging in the wind. I asked the obvious question. Then what did we see last night? One of the Pegasi replied. Ma'am, that was the first squadron of the Imperial fleet. They've mobilized the whole fleet. The Emperor's flagship is moored at Fort Blood right now. Evidently, the Emperor really doesn't like it when other ponies break his toys, Skylar said with a sour scowl. 
he was going to throw everything he had at the fictional pirate fleet in the west, until some smarter ponies put it all together for him. They still think there might be one or two enemy ships out west, but they've decided that the one they need to worry about first must be here in Blackwood Province. That's us, by the way! Pegasus spoke up again. When they got reports about the captured airships that made up their minds, they've done everything they can to lock down the border, and they sent out every fast scout they have to search for you. And one of them spotted us? I asked. Yes, Skylar said bluntly. A quick little gem powered ornithopter. Swiftwing saw it come up behind us, and he just barely managed to catch up with it when it turned and ran. He took out its engine and the pilot had to ditch it in a farm pond. But the Imperials are using line of sight coverage and Swift didn't have a hope of catching the second ornithopter that was keeping taps on the first. The fleet will know our location in a matter of hours if they don't already. What about the price ships? Well, there's some good news at least, Skylar said. A breeze drifter? The other Pegasus cleared his throat. They're into the Central Empire by now, and with all the Imperial airships transferred out there, they should actually have an easier time of it. No pony in the fleet has the slightest clue about it, that part of the plan. They assume you're only interested in attacking and destroying military targets. Maybe going after treasuries. Okay, I said, tapping my chin with a hoof. The earliest we can expect to be attacked is... Drifter, do they think they'll risk a bunch of fast and light craft against us? After Redkeep and the Western Fleet? I don't think so, ma'am. They'll send a swarm of fast scouts to keep tracking you, but they'll stand well off until they can bring up the biggest of the battleships. They won't take any chances and the Emperor is going to want to be in on the kill. What's the top speed of the slowest of their battleships? Um... They'll probably leave the old dreadnoughts behind, so that means about 30 knots, maybe a bit less," he replied. I did some quick mental calculations and growled in frustration. That means the fleet will catch up with us about the same time as we reach the Black Gate. Unless we get very lucky, I won't have enough time to modify the gate before we attacked. I hated to say it, and my eyes began to sting just thinking about it. But the merciless math had no regard for my feelings. We've got to face it. We're probably going to lose. When the time comes, Miss Nightshade, Skylar practically snapped at me. There are any number of things that may delay the fleet. We won't abandon Nebula until the last possible moment. Is that clear? Captain, I said. I'm not willing to risk a single pony's life for a beat-up old airship. It would be better if, when the fleet goes home, I want them to find their towns and cities empty of unicorns. The longer we keep the Imperial fleet focused on us, the longer filigree and lance will have to distribute the medallions. Skylar said calmly. That, that's actually a very good point. I sighed. Good, she said, smacking the table with a hoof. We have a day and a half left to do everything we can to undermine this ghastly place. Let's be about it. Aye aye, I said, saluting. I went to the galley to grab a bite before getting back to work, and Owl followed me with an odd expression on her face. What? I asked her finally as I piled some cheese, biscuits and apples on a plate. The captain's last words were from a book, were they not? She asked. Yes, she was quoting old Commodore Cloud from Miss Midship Pony Breezy. It's what ponies nowadays would call a catchphrase. Owl's little moustache tendrils wriggled in an odd way. Does it not disturb you that she is imitating a storybook character? I smiled slightly. A very wise old mare once told me that we become what we pretend to be. If Skylar is pretending to be a capable, wise, and heroic naval officer, I'm okay with that. This one suspects that capability may not be acquired through pretense. She glanced around, and seeing that we were alone, added, Majesty, and that's where we come in, old friend. 
I said, adding a couple of hard-boiled eggs to my plate. We will fill in the little gaps and make it look like the happy ending was all her doing. Owl looked at me sidelong. And are you certain the story has a happy ending, Majesty? I wasn't, but it wouldn't do any good to dwell on the extreme unpleasantness that was our probable future. As long as it has a safe ending, I will be happy. Give it a few years and maybe a bit of creative editing, and this will all seem like a pleasant little adventure. As you say, Majesty, she replied, but she didn't sound like she believed it. Thank you.